As seen within the original trilogy, and as we've discussed using the Legends lore, Obi-Wan Kenobi was certain there was no chance that his former apprentice, Darth Vader, could be redeemed back into the light side of the Force, believing that the good that existed within Anakin had been destroyed by Vader. Through the actions of Luke, Obi-Wan would admit that he was wrong, and even more important for our video, once Anakin had destroyed the Emperor, he admitted that one of his greatest failings was his failure to forgive Anakin, despite his actions as Darth Vader. But the Legends lore demonstrates that while Obi-Wan may have failed in this way with Anakin, Obi-Wan did not act the same way when it came to Asajj Ventress. Despite everything Ventress did to bring destruction and hardship to the galaxy, during the Clone War, Obi-Wan was certain that there was still good within her, forgiving her completely for what she did through the machinations of Dooku. Compared to Obi-Wan's conclusions about Anakin, the Jedi Master acted in the complete opposite way when it came to Ventress. For example, the Legends comic Obsession shows Obi-Wan taking extraordinary actions in the final months of the Clone War in attempting to locate Asajj Ventress, despite the accepted presumption that she'd been killed by Anakin on Coruscant only a few weeks earlier. Obi-Wan would ultimately locate her, and right up until the end, which wasn't really the death of Ventress in Legends but was in the eyes of the Jedi Master, Obi-Wan never gave up on his belief that there was still good within her, and that she deserved forgiveness even after her actions in the Galactic Conflict. Through this comic series, and in a journal entry Obi-Wan would make for Luke three years after Order 66, the differences between how Obi-Wan treated Anakin and Ventress couldn't be more different. So why was it that Obi-Wan was able to forgive Asajj Ventress in Legends? To start, it's necessary to look at what Obi-Wan came to understand about Ventress's life on her homeworld of Rotatak prior to the Clone War, and how this influenced Obi-Wan. After the Battle of Jabim, during the first year of the conflict, Obi-Wan would ultimately be captured by Ventress and taken to Rattatak. After escaping, the Jedi Master would learn of Ventress's backstory from someone who was once the leader of more than half of Rattatak. Ventress's parents were a rival of this individual, and before they became a true threat to his power, he executed them with only Asajj surviving. Ventress likely wouldn't have made it on her own, however, she was found by a Jedi named Kai Narek, who would recognize that she was Force-sensitive and train her in the ways of the Jedi. Obi-Wan learned that together, they accomplished great things on Rattatak, becoming heroes as they put an end to the wars. But the forces who fought them would ultimately ally against them, resulting in the death of Narek. After this, again finding herself abandoned after the death of someone who she cared about most, Ventress would be led by her anger and rage, waging a brutal war against all of her enemies on Rattatak, destroying all who opposed her. Learning this had a profound effect upon Obi-Wan. He recognized that Ventress's alliance with Dooku and her path with the dark side was a direct result of the devastating losses she experienced. As the Jedi Master wrote within his journal, under these circumstances, it was understandable why Ventress sought vengeance and developed a significant rage aimed at the Jedi Order, who she saw as simply abandoning Narek, contributing to his fate. For Obi-Wan, the most important aspect to Ventress's decision to join the dark side wasn't that she was malevolent or sought more and more power for herself, aspects that define the Sith. Instead, she simply feared being alone and feared abandonment, with her fear of these things pushing her to the dark side. This was made even worse by the realities she faced upon Rattatak. Through the brutal circumstances on her homeworld, she only ever knew war and violence, and perhaps most importantly of all, which completely separated her from Anakin for Obi-Wan, Ventress never benefited from having a Jedi Order and mentors to teach her how to deal with and move past the pain she experienced through the loss of those she cared about. All she had was the violence of Rattatak, and then ultimately the teachings of Dooku once he located her, with the Sith Lord then utilizing her rage and fury to further her path with the dark side of the Force. As Obi-Wan perfectly put it to Anakin during the final battle they would have against Ventress, Anakin's situation would be similar to hers if instead of Qui-Gon locating him on Tatooine, Darth Sidious did first. If that was the case, Obi-Wan tried to get Anakin to understand his fate may have easily been the same as Ventress's, where the Sith misled him and utilized his circumstances on Tatooine against him, and to the benefit of the Sith. This is the key difference in why Obi-Wan was able to forgive Ventress and tried to bring her away from her path with the dark side while ultimately not doing the same for Anakin once he became Vader. Unlike Ventress, Anakin had years of Jedi training and countless mentors within the Jedi Temple who could help him to overcome what troubled him most. In this way, Obi-Wan recognized that Anakin had his own very unique struggles, but he had power and opportunities that Ventress didn't even come close to having. 
And yet, in the end, Anakin chose a path of obtaining more and more power. In the eyes of Obi-Wan, Ventress's circumstances were entirely different. He came to realize that she was trapped by the dark side and didn't share the same aspects of the Sith. Given the tragedy she experienced on her homeworld, Obi-Wan understood completely why she developed a desire for vengeance and a fear of abandonment, both of which would push her towards the dark side of the Force, but Dooku also manipulated these aspects even more throughout the war. Because she was never brought into the Jedi Order, Obi-Wan understood that Ventress wasn't provided with another path, one that allowed her to overcome her circumstances through the teachings of the Jedi. All of this led Obi-Wan to conclude that he was justified in forgiving Ventress despite her actions during the Clone War, and he should do whatever he could to break her alliance to the dark side of the Force. In the end, in Legends, Ventress may have even recognized that Obi-Wan was right. So there we have it, why Obi-Wan could forgive Asajj Ventress but not Anakin. Thank you very much to all of the Patreon members of Star Wars Reading Club, as your support is so greatly appreciated. You can find all of our social media links and a link to our Star Wars gaming channel in the description below for updates and even more Star Wars content. We love making these videos, so why not subscribe for more fun Star Wars theories and discussions. Also, if you enjoyed the video, think about giving a like or leaving a comment. If not for me... For a potential what if video.